Computer to yesterday? Yeah, yesterday's bond uh, auction had a number of uh, significant issues in it. Uh, one was the interest rate was, was perceived too low. Uh, with German bond yields below, were below 2% at the time. But there has been a significant shift by foreign investors uh, who won't touch Europe anywhere in Europe now. American investors won't touch uh, German bonds, they won't touch uh, any European bonds at all. Uh, likewise Middle East and likewise Asia. So Europe's become an area where you, know, you just wouldn't invest at the moment and that's really because the outlook for the Euro is so uncertain. So it is a, a shock. The markets are continuously daily um, you know, getting closer and closer to the point where everyone will be a set, and that is the day it will melt down. Yeah. Professor Sebastian Dolan joining us from Berlin. What's your own reaction, first of all, to the fact that yesterday, I suppose, your country failed to sell all its bonds? How significant, how important do you believe that was? Well, I think it, it wasn't that significant because the story is that, that Germany failed to, to borrow as much as it wanted for 1.98 percent over a 10-year period and I mean 1.98 percent this is just a very very low interest rate and uh, if you really think about it, it it's too low given any sensible standard uh, if you expect inflation to be 2 percent on average which is the ECB's target uh, then that would mean real interest rate over the coming 10 years and well so I would say this this wasn't really that significant uh, economically but of course, it has been a big story and maybe it has really worked uh, in a way pushing the German government closer to, to a sensible solution to the crisis. What's your own view in terms of, Dan O'Brien was saying it's almost like a crossroads, this is a moment of significance to the extent that the euro is seriously in crisis at this stage? Well, I would say we, we are coming close to an end game and the end game would look uh, well, there aren't that many options left now, and so it's basically only the ECB which can, in the short run, stabilize bond yields and actually bring the crisis to an end. The problem here is that the Germans are very much opposed to, to, to that, and my fear is that if, if the ECB doesn't act in a timely fashion and doesn't actually overcome German opposition in a timely fashion, then, then there might be a breakup of the Eurozone. And, well, the reading of the auction yesterday also be that uh, investors are increasingly getting uh, the idea that there are there basically two options left now, and it's the breakup of the Eurozone, and the other is uh, large-scale intervention on the European Central Bank, possibly with a move to Eurobonds and more fiscal integration later. Dan O'Brien, you're the, was suggesting this collective bond as well, aren't you, as the yeah. way forward? Well, the, the, the Eurobond thing, you know, if you think that there's a sovereign debt crisis all over the world. Uh, Hungary last week looked for a bailout. It's not in the Euro. Um, Japan. America, Britain, all of these countries have problems. We are now in the midst of a sovereign debt crisis that is going to go on for a long time. Why is Europe more afflicted? Well, if you think of people on a high on a mountain, weather conditions have suddenly changed, everybody's at risk of getting uh, swept away by an avalanche. Why is Europe, even though its fundamentals are better in some ways than America, Britain, Japan, why is it so at risk? It's because they've roped themselves together and the weakest link, weakest person, corner, is always dragging the others down. So one way of getting around that roping together problem is everyone just sort of merge into one and have be like America, be like a full fiscal union, so you no longer have that problem and you're, you're stronger that way. But then we're going into the whole notion of treaty change. And I heard you this morning, actually, before the morning on, say that's something you're very concerned about. Yeah, well, the first thing is uh, Eurobonds have been around for a while, just to address that issue, right? And they're a complete red herring. Uh, it's it's the, our ability to raise money at German interest rates and Greece's ability to raise money at German interest rates that caused this problem in the first place. Now, uh, at the end of the day, Germany is going to pick up the tab for this euro, whether it breaks up or whether the ECB monetize the debt. Whatever way it works, Germany will pick up the tab. Now, um, issuing euro bonds straight away without Germany having control over what they would call periphery nations doesn't make any sense from a German point of view. So what does make sense from a German point of view is to put in treaty change so that they control all of the periphery nations and maybe force some of them out uh, so that they can go forward with the euro, pay the bill to fix it, but ensure that when they go forward with the euro it will be a stable world currency. I mean, Sebastian Dullin, do you think there are inherent dangers? I think you were saying that earlier to our researcher Paulette about for a country like us, if those treaty changes were to come into play, I mean, they talk about it being stronger surveillance of economic issues in countries, but do you think there are inherent dangers for countries like Ireland? Well, I, I think, of course, from a German point of view, you won't get Eurobonds, or at least not, not Eurobonds for all, all the peripheries debt without any concessions. Uh, 
Germany. So Germany will have to see some stronger surveillance and some, some stronger control of national budgets uh, in exchange for the Europeans. Um, I'm not so sure whether you need to be that afraid about it. Um, well, it, it always depends. If it's just uh, the Germans imposing austerity to the periphery, uh, then of course that might be a problem for Europe as a whole. But if there, there's a broader um, concept of the fiscal union, maybe including moving some, some of the fiscal powers to the, to, to the European level, uh, then actually European monetary union might work better in the end. And I mean, Dan, Cliff Taylor was saying that, isn't it, that the markets seem to be moving at much faster than politicians? In other words, the markets are constantly moving behind them. Well, that, that certainly has been the case since the, since the crisis really erupted in February of last year when the, when, you know, the Greek situation went, went critical. But just, just in terms of this idea of surveillance, I, th I think we need to look back and say that over the past 30 years, our politicians have blown our public finances, not once, but twice. Now, what is so wrong with having more checks and balances? And if those checks and balances, we have all sorts of checks and balances. Every democracy does. But would if, they if, set national taxes? No, would they no, tell us how to spend? No, like the, what will happen is that you know there will be no question about Finland <coughs> being a big uh, spending government, but a high taxing government, or other countries who, that are Luxembourg being a low spending, low taxing government. That's up to them. What governments have done over the past 30, 40 years is they haven't been honest with citizens. They've said, we're going to spend a lot and we're going to tax you less than we're spending. Now, that has caused the sovereign debt crisis. Governments have run up huge debts over time. That's got to end. And if we have surveillance, and it happens to be that we all share and there's peer review, and we stop our politicians from blowing our public finances, hallelujah to that. Wouldn't they head towards yeah. our low co corporation tax? Not necessarily. Jorgen sure. Stark, the head of the central bank, who is a mm. hawk, an ultra hawk, was here this week on Monday, and he was saying, no, not necessarily. He wasn't putting that on the table. Peter. No, uh, ultimate power uh, gets abused. Uh, surveillance is a silly word. The surveillance doesn't achieve anything. Uh, for Germany to go forward with a stable euro, they have to ensure that this won't happen again. And the only way they can show that is to, is to take total control of the periphery countries' finances or get them out. One of those two things has to happen. Now, total control does not mean surveillance. Uh, and the difficulty from this point of view is that we are 4 million in 400. We're a hundredth. So the economic policy, if there is a central European finance ministry, that economic policy is going to be economic policy that suits the core. It will never be economic policy that suits our endeavor. Uh, and in that situation, uh, you know, stimulating growth, uh, that won't happen. So if we don't get growth in Ireland and we get austerity, our national debt will keep on growing. We'll need another bailout. The Crow Park Agreement will have to go. And eventually, uh, you know, our tax rate will be at risk. So Boston didn't come in.